what is probate? Probate is the legal process of settling the estate of a decedent. A, de a decedent is the term for someone who has passed, someone who has died. Estate is everything that they own. So on their death, where do their assets go? Probate is a process to determine where things go. Practically speaking, what happens in a probate is the person who has been nominated in the will, or if there's no will, a person who has authority, files pleadings with the court to initiate to open the probate. This is why people sometimes get concerned because they say, oh, the court is involved. That doesn't sound like good news. Well, it may or may not be. It depends on the situation. So think of probate as the process to settle someone's estate. If there is a will, the original will will be filed with the court in the county where the person resided and it will be filed uh, together with a petition to open probate and to appoint the personal representative that's also called the executor. Then when the court says, okay, I've looked at the will, the will looks like uh, a good will, the person's been nominated, by the in the will to serve as the executor, the personal representative, then the court issues what is called letters testamentary. That's the legal authority for the personal representative to take control over the decedent's assets and manage them. By manage, what I mean is the personal representative gathers the assets, takes an inventory of them to say, hey, what is there? Then also will pay any legitimate creditors that are owed and then ultimately distributes the assets to whomever is entitled to receive them. That is it in a nutshell. Let me get into a little bit more detail because with a probate, what often happens is that people don't understand all the steps involved in a probate. And I am not teaching a law class here, but I do want to give you a little bit more information about what is involved with a probate. In Spokane County, for example, a filing fee is paid to the court, the personal representative, um, and currently it's $240. The personal representative also submits an oath promising to do their job and then the court grants in, uh, the letters testamentary and an order opening the probate. Typically this happens about a month or two months after somebody has passed away. There's nothing that says it has to happen in that time frame, but there is a rule that says that if anybody has the original will, they need to give it to the personal representative nominated or file it with the court within 40 days of someone's death. So that's why we say it's about a month or two after a death happens. Now, not to get too far into the weeds, but I do want to let you know that if there is no will, there still will be a probate. People often confuse the, um, they say, if I have a will, that means there's not going to be a probate. And no, that's not the case. A will means they're likely will be a probate if the estate plan is set up to have a probate. But if somebody did no estate planning at all, they still have, somebody still has to settle their affairs. And how's that going to happen? It's going to happen through a probate where there is no will. And that's called an intestacy probate, meaning intestacy, meaning there was no will. And then if there's no will, then who's going to serve as the personal representative? Well, it depends on the person's family situation. But if there's a surviving spouse, they would be able to serve. Um, if there's no surviving spouse, then the adult children of the family have a right to serve. And so the, the state does have um, a hierarchy of who has authority to serve as a personal representative. And then in that case, if there's no will, um, it's not letters testamentary that are issued, it's letters of administration. But it still gives authority to somebody to manage the person's affairs. Once the probate has been 
opened and the court has opened it and issued the order and the letters, then what happens? Well, again, this is why I say, if you are in a state different than Washington or Idaho, talk to a lawyer in your state. Because in Washington and Idaho, our probate laws are friendly. I would call them. Yes, there's still laws. You still have to do this and do that and do that. But the court is not involved if it is what we call a solvent estate. Solvent means that the estate has more assets in it than debts. If there are more debts, it's an insolvent estate. And then that uh, leads to court intervention. That means the court's involved with everything. Typically, though, we are working with a solvent estate, meaning there's more assets than debts. And so the court is involved with virtually nothing um, in a probate that is not an intervention probate, which makes it much easier, much easier because the court doesn't have to give a stamp of approval or give authority. They already gave authority through the letters that were issued. So we'll talk about solvent estates. If you have an insolvent estate, yes, that's much more complicated. The court's gonna be involved. So solvent estates, what do you do next? The court has issued you letters, you're serving as the personal representative, and maybe you have a lawyer, maybe you don't. don't. Um, we do actually have a guide it's called a do-it-yourself probate guide. We're happy to provide it to you to give you some guidance. But what we typically find is that people do require um, some um, legal help to properly get through a probate and not make mistakes. All right, so you've been appointed the personal representative. Within 20 days of your appointment, you must provide notice to anyone who is a beneficiary who's named in the will and anyone who is considered an heir at law. An heir at law would be uh, those people who would be entitled to receive if there weren't a will. And so this gets a little confusing. You have to give notice of the probate to people who are not receiving anything under the will. Yes, you do. So let's, let me give you a simple example. Um, your parent died and they were single at the time of their death. Their will says uh, everything goes to two of the children. The third one is disinherited uh, and you are named the personal representative. You and your one sibling share the estate equally you still have to give notice of the probate to the disinherited sibling because they are called an heir at law. That gives them the right to contest mm -hmm. what's going on. They might say, oh no, my sibling procured this will through undue influence. It wasn't dad's intention to disinherit me, this or that. It's one of the reasons it's really important to have a lawyer draw up your will, because if you do that, then it's, um, it gives more safeguards to an argument of undue influence. Doesn't, you know, preclude it, but does make things a bit easier typically. So you give notice to the beneficiaries and the heirs at law. You give notice to um, the state of Washington, to the Office of Financial Recovery, Department of Revenue, to make sure that they're aware. Perhaps there's a lien against the estate for long-term care that was um, provided on behalf of the decedent, but that's one of the notice requirements. So giving notice is really important. And that's something that if you don't give notice because you're not working with an attorney can cause problems in dividing up the estate later. So you've given proper notice, you gather up all the estate assets, um, you know, you redirect the decedent's mail to your address. So you go through and understand what bills are coming in, what assets there may be that you were unaware of. Um, you figure out what all the assets are. Uh, typically, especially when you're working with a lawyer, you're going to publish a notice to creditors in the legal newspaper in the county where they resided or where they owned real property. And that really shortens the period of time that a creditor can say, oh, the estate owed me money. If you give Notice to creditors instead of a two year period for a creditor to come back and say, you know, I was owed money. Um, it shortens it to 40, I'm sorry, four months. 
And so it's a much shorter period of time. During this period of time, you also do need to give notice to uh, what are called reasonably ascertainable creditors. What is that? But that's somebody who you should know has a claim against the estate. Give them actual notice. It's not good enough to just publish in the newspaper and cut off their claim. You give actual notice to that creditor and um, you know, put them to the test. Do they really have a claim or not? If they do, they have to follow the legal procedure to file their claim with the court. They have to do it correctly or they won't collect on their claim. So that's what you're doing. You're gathering up all the assets and figuring out who are creditors and who needs to be paid. Um, never forget the, um, the IRS. Uh, the IRS might be owed money. Maybe Dad didn't file taxes for the last few years and should have. Make sure that that is taken care of because you don't want to divide the estate between you and your other sibling later come to find out the IRS, which is called the super creditor, um, is entitled to some of that money. Now, what are you going to do? How are you going to get it back? So make sure that all taxes are paid. Speaking of taxes, if I was just talking about income taxes, estate taxes in Washington state, um, if an estate is approximately 2.2 million or less, there's no estate taxes owed. In Idaho, they don't have a state estate tax, and they're just dealing mm -hmm. with the federal level currently, which is 12.92 million. So um, typically, um, estate taxes aren't owed unless the estate is, um, you know, above 2.2 million. All right, and I was mentioning um, paying taxes because that's paying what the estate owes. And then the next step in a probate is to distribute the estate assets and you get a receipt from your other sibling, the one in my example who doesn't get anything. They don't get any money. They don't have to sign a receipt. And then you file what's called a declaration of completion and then you're done. That's all there is to it. The court wasn't involved. You filed the pleading to close out the probate, but you didn't need any permission or get any order approving it typically, anything like that. So that's usually how a probate will go in the state of Washington and Idaho. It can be even simpler than what I've described. Mm -hmm.